Recently, there was a lot more commentary on my old video of shifting without the clutch. A lot of people who basically just talk on the internet with no facts to like to make assertions without any proof and don't feel the need to present any proof. They make claims based on incorrect assumptions of how a transmission and clutch work because they obviously have never seen one. Now, I am not an expert in the field of engine design. We can get that out of the way. I can also make the assumption very easily that the people commenting are also not experts in that field. And I am also not talking about mechanics who work on engines. That is not the same as someone who designs engines and needs to understand friction and torque a bit more in depth than someone putting parts together. Hell, I put parts together, and there are many video series on the internet you can watch me doing that. Some of the claims basically boil down to that if you don't use a clutch, you're slamming gears, uh, gears together and gear dogs together. The clutch somehow stops the transmission and puts it into some kind of magical realm. Um, this is at least one of the claims. Now, I have some rules. If you wish to refute me, since I will be making this video and detailing my claims and showing my supporting evidence. Number one. Idiots and trolls in the comments talking at the rear end will not get any response. Number two, any refuting of my claims needs to be done in a video form using real dirt bike transmission to show how I am wrong and you are right. Number three, take on three challenges that I will set up later in this video to show me the clutch of superpowers that you claim. Finally, just a word of warning here. I will not respond to anyone who obviously has not watched the full video. It's pointless for me to reiterate points that I have clearly already gone over. So if you wish to respond, you should at least have the decency to have listened to every point I have made and said in this video so that I don't have to restate them and so you don't go refuting things that are already talked about in this video. So, start off with, we're going to make this a comprehensive video and so I'm going to first just start off with why your clutch what or why your transmission is designed the way it is why is why do you upshift why do you downshift and why is neutral in between first and second gear so we have this bike here so obviously whenever you're you're riding on this um, downshifting will go to a lower gear, and upshifting will go to a higher gear. And the reasoning, or at least one of the best reasonings for this that I have heard, is whenever you're accelerating, your weight is being pushed back on the motorcycle, right? And so <clears throat> having your weight being pushed back, it's much easier for you to be doing an upshifting motion. And most likely you're going to be shifting up if you're going to be going fast. Now the opposite is true when you're braking. Pulling the brake, your weight's going to be shifted forward. And in that position, it's going to be easier for you to do a downshifting motion to use your foot to go down. So, and you're more likely to be downshifting whenever your weight's being pushed forward. And so that's why you shift down to go to a lower gear. You shift up to go to a higher gear. Now, why is neutral in between first and second? And the reason is so you know that you're in neutral. Now uh, there have been a lot of older dirt bike designs where neutral could have been first um, and then you know neutral is first and then all up is all the gears but just think of it this way is that if if the very first if all the way down was neutral and, there, and then all the way up was fifth if you're gonna go if you're riding and you're you know street riding for example you stop at a stoplight you just downshift in the first um, how do you know you accidentally didn't downshift one too many in the neutral? And now you're in neutral and you start to go, you know, so you pull in your clutch and or grab up your bike, pull out your clutch, and then you're in neutral and the car from behind you hits you. So um, the reasoning for putting it between first and second is that you have you actually know that you're in you're in neutral when you try to 
um, <clears throat> when you put it there because you have to physically force yourself to, to get it into that location. Otherwise, it's either just down all the way, you're in first, you don't have to count gears or nothing. So it's much, much easier uh, to make sure you know you're in first or what gear you're in, or you're at least in a gear. Um, if neutral is a little bit more difficult, or it takes a little bit more effort to get into. And so that is one of the reasons why neutral is in between first and second. So let's start with the components of the engine. The crank, which would sit in here, is connected to the piston, which is where the power and torque is generated. This is transferred to the clutch, which provides as input to the transmission. The transmission has two shafts. The main shaft, which is connected to the clutch, and the output or drive shaft, which is connected to the rear tire out on the side. Each of these shafts can be either an input or an output shaft. However, it's typical that the main shaft is the input from the engine and the drive shaft provides the output to the rear tire. However, the opposite is also true in some situations. For example, if you drift start your bike, the rear tire is providing input into the transmission through the drive shaft. And the output is then generated to the main shaft that forces the piston and cylinder to move to force your bike to start. The components of the clutch are five pieces. The first piece is the outer clutch basket, which has a gear on it, is what the output from the crank moves. However, this does not directly move the main shaft of the transmission. The inner clutch hub is connected to the main shaft and is what moves the transmission. You can see the inner clutch hub spins freely from the outer clutch basket. We have inner clutch plates which slide onto the inner clutch hub and move with the inner clutch hub. Then we have outer clutch plates which slide on to the clutch and move the outer clutch basket. When the clutch is together, the fifth part, which is this pressure plate, is placed along the end here with a series of springs that go in these holes here. And it tightly compresses this stack of clutch plates and allows the clutch to move as a single unit. Both the outer clutch hub and the inner, or the outer clutch basket and the inner clutch hub move together. And so when the power from the engine moves this, it's also moving the, t the main shaft. When you pull in your clutch, a rod pushes this pressure plate outward, allowing for free room for the clutch plates to separate. Varying this plate allows for varying degrees of movement for a variable degree of slippage on these plates. Let's see, like this it would start to slip. So the plates may still turn the transmission just at a different rate than the engine is outputting or even completely disengage the clutch so that no amount of force is being input to the main shaft. However, the clutch can be grabby and never completely disengage. Other things such as oil, the springs, and the amount of resistance from the transmission help to either have the clutch plates stick together and slip less or slip more. There's nothing physically separating the plates. It's all about the resistance from the transmission and the ability of the plates to naturally separate with less pressure forcing them together. This simply means that pulling in the clutch does not necessarily mean your engine is a completely 100% completely disengaged from the transmission. The rear wheel is still spinning, so there isn't 100% resistance in the same way there would be if you're at a complete stop. That would further force the plates, to, the plates to slip more. So you are not guaranteed that pulling in the clutch has automatically 100% disengaged the transmission. However, for the sake of argument and the upcoming description of the transmission, I will assume that this is the case for simplicity. 
I would just assume that when you pull in the clutch, the main shaft isn't engaged at all. Which again, as I'm saying here, it's not 100% true as we'll see later. Let's take a look at the transmission. The transmission has a shifting cam at the bottom, which has a pattern which determines the placement of the movable gears on the shaft for each gear selection and including neutral. You can see with this shifting cam here, which is for a four speed, these grooves here are what move the shifting forks to place the movable gears. And this here, for example, is one of the movable gears. And it's the shifting fork. And you see the shifting fork has a little thing in there which would sit in here. Sit in here and that's what moves the gear back and forth on the shaft. The shifting forks ride in these grooves, moves the gears back and forth on the shaft to engage any particular gear. The gears themselves have what are known as gear dogs. And that are these knobs that are on the side of this gear. And they help them to engage with adjacent gears, either adjacent gears having gear dogs themselves or having grooves like this for the gear dogs to place themselves inside of. To achieve neutral, you have gears which spin on the shaft, for example, this one here, or on the end here, we have this gear which spins on the shaft. I can show you that we take this gear off. It has grooves for placement of dog gears from this gear right here, these dog gears. And it spins on the shaft on this. So in order for this to actually be turning, this one here, which is actually on the shaft, needs to be engaged into here to make this gear the turning one, as if this gear and this gear are one, when this gear is turning this gear. If that makes sense, but um, since this gear here is on the shaft, just like this gear, or any gears which would be grooved into the shaft is turning on the shaft, in order for it to be engaged, the gear that spins freely on the shaft needs to now be connected with the gear that doesn't spin free on the shaft so that this gear now turns the shaft. So when this gear is moving, it turns this gear. And all the rest of the gears aren't doing anything because they're all spinning freely. Because a gear that's engaged on the shaft is always paired with a gear that does not engage with the shaft until another gear connects with it. So then whenever a gear engages with it, both are now turning and providing power to the output shaft. And so this is in neutral. So what you can see now is that if, let's just say that when you pull in your clutch in neutral, the output shaft, the drive shaft isn't moving because you're parked, but let's say the main shaft doesn't move either. Well, if that's the case and your gears are lined up here, you could never shift into neutral from neutral to first or second. So what does that mean? That means that even when you pull in your clutch, there's such less resistance here in pulling these gears that they're still moving. The main shaft still has to be turning these gears or else they'll never line up. Even though you disengage the clutch. That's because there's no resistance in the transmission to help force those force the clutch apart. As soon as you put in the gear, it'll force them apart more because now there's resistance from the back tire um, not going anywhere if you put the clutch in. But there's less resistance here so the clutch is, has to be still moving these. That means that our first, ex or our first challenge is what we're making here now. The first challenge is this. The assertion is that if you use the clutch, you're not going to have cause as much wear on these gears because somehow 
I know people say the banging metal dealer. This transmission is metal. It's always going to be metal. It doesn't turn to plastic whenever you pull on the clutch. So that makes no, absolutely zero sense for someone to say that. But that was one of the comments that uh, you're banging metal together if you don't pull on the clutch. You're banging metal together no matter what you do. But the transmission is metal and you're banging it together. So the challenge is this. It was not possible to bang the metal together, <laughs> whatever that means, or it was not possible for the transmission to wear. Put your bike in neutral. Shift in the second gear, but shift very, very slowly. Now you're not going anywhere, you got your clutch in, shift very slowly from neutral to second gear. In fact, slip, shift halfway and try to stop there between neutral and second gear. Do you hear a banging sound in your transmission? Are these gear dogs halfway between now banging each other? If that's the case, then your transmission is still moving with your clutch pulled in. And the clutch is still moving the transmission in that case because there's less resistance coming from the transmission since the transmission is in a neutral position, allowing these spinning gears to still spin. So, that's the challenge, because a lot of the people say that it stops the transmission. Well, try that experiment, and if you don't hear any banging, let me know. Post a video of it. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. Now, now these dogs here are engaged, these, these on the end here. Now if you pay attention, you can see these dogs here. As it's moving, I'm moving the main shaft. As you can see, I'm moving the main shaft. You can see that the dogs are sometimes lining up directly like there. They won't go to engage. And eventually they get into a position like here where they can engage if I shift it next. Now let me stop moving the main shaft. So now I'm moving just the drive shaft and not the main shaft. As you can see, I'll back up a little bit. You can see, see I'm not moving the drive shaft. And look, the same exact thing is happening. So this would be equivalent to pulling in your clutch. So if you pull it in your clutch, the dogs are still moving and they're still lining up directly and they're still, so they're still you would have the same exact thing happen whether you pull in the clutch or not. And again, like I said, when you pull in the clutch, it, the resistance is what helps you disengage those clutch plates. So you may not be 100% disengaged anyways. So what we're saying here is that there's no difference between pulling in your clutch or letting out the gas, which would essentially be doing less input on the main shaft and in fact you would have more input from the drive shaft because you would hear the engine revving down and you, you hear it because it, it's not getting enough gas and so it's being forced to maintain an RPM because the rear wheel is what's pushing it to maintain an RPM and as you can see if I'm just spinning the drive shaft the gears are still behaving the same way no matter which shaft I'm turning the gears are still lining up and unlining up. So you would still bang the gear dogs together no matter which way you do it. So the only thing that's, that's, um, uh, that's beneficial here is how fast you're able to shift in both cases. So challenge number two is in second gear, wide open, just go second gear wide open, pull in your clutch, now shift slowly into third gear, very slowly. In fact, stop halfway between third, uh, second and third. Are the gears banging together? Do you hear a banging sound? If you do, then your <clears throat> then your notion that pulling in the clutch prevents gear wear is incorrect. It is not stopping the transmission. It is not stopping these gears. These gear dogs are still moving um, together and apart whether or not the input to the transmission is coming from the main shaft or from the drive shaft. It doesn't matter. 
So the only thing that does matter is shifting fast. That is what saves your transmission. Now I'm going to tell you the difference between the torque or banging the gear dog. So the first thing I, I'd said before, so the, then that's a challenge, by the way, doing that and making a video of it, show me that they don't bang together. Um, and then also show me a transmission like this and show me why it doesn't bang together. So now the, <clears throat> the only thing that, whenever you turn off the torque off of the, the, the transmission, um, these gear dogs, we'll put this one in the, in the gear here. See if I can get it in the gear. So it lines up so it's easier. So now, so these gear dogs, whenever you, whenever they're together, they're exerting torque. Depending on which gear it is, they're absor absorbing torque onto these gear dogs. And so when you're, you're full throttle, you have a lot of torque on those gear dogs, pulling those gears together. And that is whenever you try to shift with a lot of torque still on these gears, whether it's coming from the drive shaft or from the main shaft, if the torque is enough, it'll be very hard to shift. And in that case, um, you can bend a shifting fork. That's the damage that you can do by shifting with too much torque on transmission. The damage you can do to the gear dogs is by shifting too slowly and letting them bang together. You gotta shift fast. So those are the two ways that the transmissions get worn down or things get broken. Shifting with torque on them, which damages the shifting forks, or shifting too slowly, which is banging the gears together. You shift fast and don't shift with torque on the engine. So you have to let out the torque, whether it's just blipping the throttle or using the clutch and blipping the throttle, or using the clutch and you can still have the throttle wide open, which is power shifting. And in fact, you can actually still shift at some lower RPMs. You can have the throttle halfway open and still shift because the torque on the gear dogs isn't, isn't enough to prevent you from shifting. So that is true that certain RPMs may still, I don't recommend it, because obviously you don't want to be shifting with some torque on the gears, but sometimes it's not enough for a shift because you're always going to have some kind of torque because the rear wheel is going to be moving this. So this is your next challenge, by the way. And that is put your bike into, say, first gear or second gear. Pull in the clutch. Have someone tow your bike. So you can have the bike off. Don't even have the bike running. The bike is off. Have someone tow your bike with a quad or something and have them tow you pretty fast. Now with your clutch in and you're in first gear, try to shift into second gear. Or if you're in second gear, try to shift into third gear. If it's extremely hard to shift, you have to know that the torque from the drive shaft is forcing these gear dogs together such that you cannot shift. So try it in first gear, try it in second gear. And, you, and, if, and if you can shift, then of course, make a video of that and say that, oh yeah, I can shift with my clutch and it's magic. Um, but again, if you can't shift, you have to assert that uh, the clutch is not stopping the transmission and it is to do with the torque, no matter where it's coming from, whether it's from the drive shaft or from the main shaft. That's the assertion. So that was the, the third challenge. So now back to the, the other thing is what, what actually can cause damage whenever you let off the gas. Now what can cause damage is on a two stroke. If you let off the gas and don't pull in the clutch, you're allowing the drive shaft to turn the crank and maintain an RPM that is faster than the amount of gas you're giving it because you're forcing it up and down. So you're not actually giving any torque anymore from the crank, all the torque coming from the rear wheel, because you aren't giving the crank enough gas to go and maintain an RPM. And in order, to, whenever you're giving it more gas, you have more oil in here from the premix that's that's actually lubricating everything that's that's in the cylinder and in here. And so when that goes down and wears down and burns up, 
you're running with less lubricant for that RPM range than you're supposed to be because you're not giving any gas. It's being forced from the rear wheel, forcing the crank. So that is actually a dangerous situation. And that has nothing to do with shifting. So if you just let off the gas and drift without pulling in the clutch, that's actually more detrimental to the engine than shifting. Because as I said, shifting makes no difference. You're wearing the gearbox down the same way, um, whether you let off, whether you use the clutch or not. It has more to do with how fast you shift. It has more to do with how much torque is still on those uh, gear dogs when you shift. However, now whenever you shift, you would turn off the gas and then you shift real fast and turn back on the gas. So the theory here is that since you're doing it really fast, you're not going to have enough time to run out of the oil that would cause this to have less lubrication at the RPM. So it's okay to shift without the clutch as long as you're doing it um, relatively fast and not letting it wear down the, the amount of lubricant that's in here. So, so those are your three challenges and that is the actual only implication that you can even say is is that but again whenever you're shifting you're not supposed to be leaving the bike uh, in that state for that long so it, it wouldn't run out of the oil because the oil should still be built up in there and you shift fast and the gas is back on it's actually just drifting it um, like that, that that causes the problem so so back to what I was saying before and you see the gear dogs um, have you ever sat down on your bike and tried to shift through the gears dry? When you try to shift through the gears dry, do you always have to, do you, do you end up having to rock your bike back and forth to shift to the next gear? To get it in gear? When the engine's not running? Why is that? There's no input coming from here. That's because these gear dogs don't line up. So you have to rock your bike back and forth to line these gear dogs up when you're shifting all the way through them. A couple more lined up, you shift, got to rock it back and forth again, shift it again. So that's another challenge. Do shift through all your gears perfectly without having to rock your bike back and forth. Um, because obviously at that point this transmission is not moving so you, this is disengaged. So you should, you know, in fact pulling your clutch, does it help? <laughs> um, so again, your transmission still needs to move in order for you to engage the, the, to the next gear. So anyhow, if you think anything here is incorrect, then get a bike transmission like this. Show me exactly what I said was wrong and why it's wrong. Try those four, three or four challenges that I mentioned and see if you get no banging using the clutch. Because if you use the clutch, you're telling me that there's no wear or possible wear. And the gear dogs are still going to bang back and forth. It all has to do more with the speed of your shifting. So, anyhow. So, thanks for listening to this. And, yeah. You can leave comments, but again, I'm not going to respond to people who are making stuff up or trolling in the comments. Um, if you really want to argue or respond, again, do a response video and actually show your supporting evidence, not anecdotal um, stories that are bullshit.